Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Amanda Gummert. She's with the University of Kentucky Water Quality Specialist there. We're kind of used to cities or municipalities taking care of urban stormwater um, issues or flooding issues, um, but around our house and um, we can really think about in our neighborhoods too, we can think about some simple practices that we can do. And so the first thing we always recommend is for someone to do their own residential site assessment. And so we have a, a diagram here that, that has some arrows pointing to places where you might have stormwater runoff. So we're always looking for what we call impervious surfaces or things like pavement. You know, that's a sidewalk, a driveway, your roof, um, an outbuilding. Where are places that stormwater, when it rains, it's not going to infiltrate the ground. And so that's going to create runoff that we have to deal with. So that's one thing. It's like walk around your yard and are there places where you, you know there's going to be runoff? In which direction is it going? And also look for places that might have bare soil because we never want to have bare soil because that's just going to lead to erosion um, or muddy conditions. Or if you have maybe an area that holds water when we do receive a lot of rain. And we look for places like that or places kind of low in the landscape that or is, you know, you might have ponded water. And so some of the things that we might think about doing, um, think about a residential rain garden. It doesn't have to be large. Uh, but it can be a small area. We want it away from the foundation of the home. We don't want it near structure, but we want it in a place where we can have some additional infiltration. Um, the way I like to do a rain garden is actually excavate out some soil, um, amend it with sand so that and mulch so we can get more infiltration, more water storage. And then you can plant that and landscape it with nice plants that um, typically will bloom at various times of the year. There may be a small shrub like button bush, something like that. Things that will be pollinators or attract pollinators. Um, and so these residential rain gardens can be just a different kind of landscaping that you can do around the yard. But we do have some um, specific guidance for putting those in. So definitely check out our extension publications on how to install those. Um, the other things that we might think about are alternative pavement options. Like maybe you don't need that paved driveway anymore. If it's starting to crack or break up or you're thinking you might need to um, update it anyway, uh, maybe think about putting some um, pervious um, driveway um, pads in or um, they're kind of like interlocking concrete um, grid systems and then you can plant grass in it. So you actually have some active roots there that can take up water or help infiltrate water. So it's really just assessing what's going on around your house and thinking about a different set of practices rather than the standard ones that we usually think about. Absolutely. And one of those standard ones though, that I think is still really effective is gathering rainwater there at your residence. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's a couple of ways you can do that. A rain barrel, which is usually, you know, around a 50 gallon type structure, you need to get a food grade barrel and you can convert that yourself. So that's one option. And we also um, have options for larger um, catchment areas. And that's more of like a cistern type thing. So you can do above ground cisterns. Um, below ground cisterns are going to be a little more expensive just for the excavation. Um, and you always need to consider safety when you're dealing with large quantities of water because it can be really heavy. You want to make sure you're doing it in a safe way. And we've got publications that can help folks make those decisions as well. Um, but from a stormwater and water quality perspective, any amount of water that we can slow down and soak in um, into the ground and get the, the soil, using that soil as a filter system instead of sending it to the stormwater system, it's always a bonus. It's always a good thing for water quality. Um, and a bonus for us homeowners is we get to use that water to water our plants. So you save a little money from Absolutely. having to use irrigation. Yeah. We had the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service has a Backyard Streams website. And so it's a more encompassing than just stormwater, but we do have a link on that page where you can go to see all of the publications and they're organized by topic. And if you scroll down through that list of publications, you'll find the stormwater publications. All right. We'll certainly appreciate the information. Thanks for watching and have a great day.